everyone wants a high value man. But what exactly is a high value man? And how do you find one? Let's discuss. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. K and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm talking about the concept of the high value man and what exactly makes a man high value, especially when it comes to romantic relationships. I will say that I'm doing this video as someone who has never watched a KKK <laughs> Kevin Samuels video and I will never watch one of his videos. So please don't send me any links or any posts to any of his content because I just won't watch them. Oh no, not, I, I, I can't say it. This is a villain so evil, so sinister, so horribly vile that even the utterance of his name strikes fear into the hearts of men. The only safe way to refer to this king of darkness is simply him. So I understand if you're watching this video with some reservations about what I've got to say, I get that. However, just because I don't watch him doesn't mean I haven't done my research. After all, he's not the only one who's talking about this. Let's start with a definition of what a high value man is. From the ultimate fountain of knowledge, that is, Urban Dictionary. A high value man, or HVM for short, is used to refer to a specific caliber of man that women value the most in the dating market. It goes on to describe the characteristics of the high value man and specifies that these men are typically high earners, along with a list of other desired attributes. The concept of the high value man comes from the hypergamy movement, which really boils down to securing an advantageous man that improves your social and financial prospects. Basically what's referred to as dating up. The ironic thing is that marriage initially was for this reason. Families would go off to great efforts to secure good matches that benefited their children. It was only in the latter part of the 20th century that the idea of marrying for love then became a much more valid reason. So the idea is that if you're a single girl looking for a mate, that you need to go for a high value man or a HVM and avoid the LVM or ZVM, which refers to the low value man or even worse, a zero value man. And by doing this, it gives her the best chance of financial security for her and any children she may choose to have with that man and set her and her children up for a life of comfort and security. In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with looking for a mate that will provide you with these things. I don't have a problem with it. After all, one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in life is who to marry. And it not only needs to be about the fuzzy, warm love and affection, but also about the cold, hard practicalities around finances, religion, personality, your extended family, and all these other things as just as valid as whether or not you love the person that you're committing to. In fact, many women have ended up making the wrong decision and have paid dearly for it. The hypergamy movement might be seen as a more recent phenomenon, at least in the black community. However, this has been an established way of doing things for other communities like Southeast Asians, Eastern Europeans, they are very open and forthcoming about this being a way of life for them. Okay, I know this is a very gross generalization about these other cultures, but you get what I mean. So where's all the confusion come from? I mentioned that the hypergamy movement started and was aimed at women. But as with all things, it will spread and become bigger than it was originally intended to be. And that's now what's happened. So a group of men found out that this is what women were looking for. So they've used this as a cheat code or as a blueprint and they've modeled themselves and their approach towards women on this. And it's basically been done, I would say not for truly genuine reasons. And it's more so as a way of getting sexual access to women, which, tend to happen in the world we live in. And it's all been driven by this whole intersexual relationships between men and women, with men desiring sex and women desiring relationships. Again, gross generalization, but it does apply here. It's a no brainer. If you're a heterosexual man, why wouldn't you find out what the other sex find attractive, emulate it and improve your chances 
with the other sex. I would do it if I was a guy. The issue now though is that the terms HVM has been bastardized and overtly simplified to mean just one thing, financial. If you're in a job where you're earning six figures or you're financially well off, you are apparently a high value man. So now many women and men just think that what makes you a high value person is the contents of your bank account rather than your character. They use famous people like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates as examples of what a high value man is. And newsflash, these people are not high value. They are high earners, but they're not certainly high value. There's a difference. Now, what it's got a lot of men thinking and doing is that they assume that just because they're rich, that they can get access to any woman and get away with having shitty personalities. And they feel entitled to the top group of women. Another newsflash, no one is entitled to anyone. And that's the bitter truth. You can be the Dalai Lama, you can be Naomi Campbell. There are no guarantees when it comes to dating and relationships. There's certainly no cheat codes that will get you that relationship that you want. I know this is a bitter pill to swallow, but the sooner you understand this and realize that the combination of luck, fate, your physical attractiveness, and other millions of other factors determine whether or not you end up in a good, healthy relationship. But modeling yourself after a so-called HVM does not guarantee that. Unfortunately, these men have yet to get the memo. They are now armed with a new way of getting women and they're talking about women's perceived value on the dating market. So what if I told you that all of this is just surface packaging and being a high value person is more to do with your character? Unfortunately, having good character is not something that is clearly visible and it's definitely not easy to measure and assess. It doesn't come with financial value, unlike the fancy Rolex or your fancy job title. Plenty of rich people are messed up, entitled, narcissistic, and they feel like they can get away with anything they want. The irony about this whole thing is that even when these high value men get in relationships, they are never happy. And how would you be happy when you have a chip on your shoulder the size of Mount Everest? Nothing will ever make you happy when you are always having an agenda. And it's an agenda against women. So how do you become a high value person? I'm not saying not to focus on your career and your financial development, but it's not the only thing that matters. Not when it comes to dating a relationship. The complicated answer that you're not gonna like is that you need to be all things. Just like juggling or balancing plates on a pole, you need to focus on all of these things in order to be regarded as a high value person. It's not just about your physical appearance or your financial, but you need to focus on other things. You need to have a rounded, you need to be a rounded person. Do you have hobbies? Are you, do you have good relationships with other people? Not necessarily in a sexual way, but with your friends, with your family, your work colleagues. What do people say about you when you're not in the room? And this is often a good measure of your character. Another thing that I find is increasingly becoming rare in this world is the much needed value of empathy. Do you have empathy for other people? And that's the difference that makes somebody into a high value person. Now, what is empathy? Empathy is being able to see the story from the other side. It's putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, even when it doesn't benefit you to do so. It's not all the time that you need to be constantly thinking about somebody else or thinking about others, but it does count, especially when you have a disagreement with somebody else or when you're interacting with somebody else. Until you do that, you'll just continue to be miserable and you won't have the kind of relationship that you can be capable of. One that is mutually enriching and both people work together as a team. I know that that's what I want. So what do you guys think of my video today? I know it can get argumentative really quickly, so I do ask to be respectful to each other while you're sharing your thoughts and your comments. Let's continue this conversation in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you guys. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, engage, and let me know you're here and consider subscribing to my channel. Why not also share this video with somebody else and see what their thoughts are on this topic. Make sure to have a good week ahead and I'll see you in my next video. Bye now.